Welcome to Spreadsheets Are All You Need, How GPT Works, where if you can read a spreadsheet, you can understand modern AI. That's because in this series, we're walking through a spreadsheet that implements a large language model entirely in basic spreadsheet functions. And not just any large language model. We're implementing GPT-2, an early ancestor of ChatGPT. Now, because it is a spreadsheet, it can only support a smaller context link, and it does implement the smallest form of GPT-2, known as GPT-2 small. But architecturally, for all intents and purposes, it's the same model that was breaking headlines just a few short years ago. Let's take a look under the hood how it works. Now, in subsequent videos, we're going to go through each of these stages step by step. But for now, I'm going to touch on each one lightly as a kind of table of contents for future videos. In addition, I've added a final column here on the right that indicates what tab in the spreadsheet corresponds to what action inside GPT-2. Let's start at the beginning. After you input your text, it is split into a series of tokens. So for example, let's take Mike is quick, he moves. This would be split into tokens per a predefined dictionary. Now, you'll note that every single word here corresponds to a single token, but that is not always the case. In fact, it's not uncommon for a single word to be split into two, three, or even more tokens. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet. So here's where you input your prompt, and because of the way the parsing works, you have to put each word in a separate line. You're gonna have to add the spaces as well as the punctuation. It then gets taken to this sheet, which is, or tab, called prompt to tokens, where it goes through an algorithm called byte pair encoding to map it to a final list of known token IDs, which you see right here. Now that we have the tokens, we need to map them to a series of numbers called an embedding. Every token is mapped to a long list of numbers. In the case of GPT-2 small, it's a list of 768 numbers. These capture both the meaning as well as the position of each token in the prompt. Let's see how this works inside the spreadsheet. Okay, so here we are in the spreadsheet that implements this. It's tokens to text embeddings tab. And there's two parts to it. At the top, you'll see our prompt tokens, Mike is quick, he moves. And these are those prompt IDs we saw from the earlier step. And then from columns three onwards are the list, the 768 numbers that represent the semantic meaning of the word Mike. Let's go look at column 770 and we can see where this list ends. Right here, you can see the list ending. So let's go back to the beginning. And you'll notice there's another list here. The job of this list is to actually change the tokens from the list above to reflect their different positions in the prompt. So let me explain and demonstrate that here by changing this word moves to the word Mike, which is the first word in our prompt. And we'll go through here. We'll recalculate our tokens. We'll see we get Mike again. Then we get back to our tokens to text embeddings. We'll calculate the sheet. And you'll notice that Mike here has the same ID and has the exact same embedding values as it does up here, right? Row two and row seven are totally identical. That's because the only job of this first set of rows is to capture the semantic meaning. But when we take a look here at this part where we have the position embeddings, you'll notice that the values of the embedding for Mike at position one are different than the values for Mike at position six. We've effectively altered the values of the embeddings for Mike slightly to reflect its different position in the prompt. Okay, now that we've captured both the meaning and the position, the tokens in the prompt, they pass on to a series of layers or blocks. The first is multi-headed attention, and then the second so it's known as a multi-layer perceptron. That's another name for a neural network. Let's consider our sentence again. Mike is quick, he moves, where we want the transformer or GPT to fill in the last word. The attention mechanism, the first phase, 
tries to figure out what are the most important words in the sentence and how they relate. So for example, the word he, it might recognize as referring to Mike earlier in the prompt. Or it might realize that the word moves and quick probably relate. This information is important for the next layer, the multi-layer perceptron. So take, for example, this word quick. It has multiple meanings in English. It can mean moving fast. It can mean bright, as in quick of wit. It can mean a body part, as in the quick of your fingernail. And in Shakespearean English, it can even mean alive, as opposed to dead, as in the phrase the quick and the dead. The information from the attention layer, that the word moves, is there with the word quick helps the multilayer perceptron disambiguate which of these four meanings is most likely in this sentence, and that it's most likely the first one, moving in physical space. And it would use that to figure out what the most likely next word to complete the prompt is, like the word quickly, or the word fast, or the word around, all of which are about fast movement in physical space. It's also important to note that this Attention, then perceptron, attention, then perceptron process happens iteratively. In GPT-2 small, it happens across 12 different layers as it iteratively refines its prediction of what the next most likely word or token should be. Let's see how this is implemented in the spreadsheet. So you'll notice in the spreadsheet, there are these tabs, block zero, block one, block two, all the way to block 11. These are our 12 blocks. And the output of block zero becomes the input of block one, and the output of block one becomes the input of block two. So they're all chained together all the way through. Let's look inside one of these blocks. So here's the first block. And each block has about 16 steps in this implementation. Steps one all the way to around step 10 are basically your attention mechanism. And from step 10 all the way to the remaining 16 is the multilayer perceptron. We're going to go through this in a lot more detail in future videos, but I want to give you a sneak peek of something. So here, right at step seven, is the heart of the attention mechanism. It tells us where it's paying the most attention to amongst the words. So let's look at the word he. You'll notice the largest value here, 0 0.48, is highest right here. So it's taking the word he, and it's realizing that it most likely is referring to the word Mike. 0.48 is larger than any of the other values. So it's going to influence the values it passes to the multilayer perceptron more than any of the other words. The other other words are getting a much smaller influence on the output it passes along. Let's take the word moves again. You'll notice that it's looking most at the word Mike, and then the next other word it's looking most at is quick. So it's going to use the information from those two words, again, that it passes to the next layer to try and interpret the value or meaning of the word moves. Okay, we're almost at the end. The last step is the language head, which figures out what the actual next likely token is. What it does is it takes the output of the final block and converts it into a set of probabilities across all the known tokens in its dictionary. And then it picks from amongst the most likely tokens randomly one of those tokens to complete the sentence. In this case, it's picked simply the highest probability token, which was quickly, and fills that in. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet. Now, in the spreadsheet, you'll see this is broken across three tabs. Layer norm, which is a process we'll talk about in a future video, generating logits, and a softmax, again, concepts we'll talk about later, to finally get our predicted token. Now, in a true large language model that you've probably played with, it actually picks from amongst a set of the most likely tokens. But in order to simplify this sheet, we just simply pick from the very most likely token, which gives a very consistent output. That's why we've got a max function. It's just simply taking the most likely output. This is what's known as having temperature zero. When you go outside of temperature zero, it starts picking from more than just the top token and starts looking at the top 10 or 20 or 30 or more tokens, and it picks from them according to an algorithm. Okay, that's GPT-2 at a glance. We'll be going through each of these steps in future videos, but for now, I hope that gives you a starting point as to what's going on under the hood and where you can see it happening live for yourself inside the spreadsheet. Thank you.